You remember that big ouch moment in football games? Or soccer, I got you. When one of the players tackles skillfully right into the knees of another player, bending it into an unnatural pose. Or when there's a player who makes a drastic stop or turn in the middle of a run and ends up rolling over the field, writhing in agony. These types of scenarios usually cause the anterior cruciate ligament, or ACL, to be torn. What is torn ACL? To understand the torn ACL, we need to learn a little bit about the anatomy of our knee. Our knee consists of three bones, the femur, or thigh bone, the tibia, or our shin bone, and the patella, or the kneecap. They are stabilized and held together by the ligaments. The collateral ligaments, like the medial or MCL on the inner side of our knees, and lateral or LCL on the outer side, prevent the knee from bending out of position. Then there is the posterior cruciate ligament, or PCL, and the anterior cruciate ligament, inside the knee joint. They control the back and forth motion of our knees, and also provide rotational stability. Lastly, the cartilage, such as the articular and meniscus, along with the quadriceps and hamstrings muscles, are there to help articulation of our knees. So, yes, this ACL is the part that is affected by the injury. Risk factor. Some factors may increase the risk of ACL injury. Females naturally have higher risks due to the difference in muscle strength and hormonal influence. Doing particular sports like football, American football, basketball, gymnastics, and downhill skiing. Wrong movements such as moving the knees inward when doing squats. Poor conditioning before doing sports. Playing on unsuitable or poor quality turf. Wearing loose shoes or other equipment. Causes. Injuries to ACL are not only sustained by professional athletes, but by people doing recreational sports as well. It can be caused by several of these reasons. 1. Receiving a force or blow to your knees, for example, during a sliding tackle. 2. Pivoting or turning when your foot is firmly planted. 3. A drastic change to your running speed. 4. Landing awkwardly after a jump. Type of injuries. Injured ligaments can be graded depending on the condition after the injury. Grade 1. The ligament is mildly damaged and stretched, but can still help stabilize the knee. Grade 2. This rare grade has a ligament that is stretched far enough until it becomes loose, also called a partial tear. Grade 3. Known as the complete tear. The ligament splits into two pieces and the joint becomes unstable. The avulsion of ACL is when one of the ends of the ACL is detached from the bone. This one is more common in kids. In extreme cases, such as when the blow to the knee happens when the foot is firmly planted, the three important structures of the knee, the ACL, MCL and meniscus, would easily be torn apart by the impact. This has always caused debilitating pain and a serious amount of unhappiness granting it the name of unhappy triad injury. More info about first aids and diagnosis are upcoming in the second part of this video. The ACL injury of the knee due to high impact movements rarely happens unnoticed. At the exact moment of the injury, a popping sound might be heard and your knee may limp soon after. If you suspect this is an ACL injury, put your leg above the heart and put ice on it. Do not use it to do any activity and directly see your doctor to get a complete observation, especially if a bluish area appears or your feet become cold, which means that the blood vessels to your knee is injured. Within 24 hours, your knee will swell and become painful. The knee will lose a wide range of movement. Tenderness along the joint line and discomfort while walking are expected. The swelling and pain eventually resolve on their own but is still unsafe for use in sports activity, which can risk further damage to the meniscus on the knee. Diagnosis. The doctor will ask about how your knee can become damaged. Physical examination and comparison with a healthy knee can help. The Lachman test will determine whether your ACL is still intact or not. Special tests can also show that other ligaments are still in their place. X-ray imaging helps to show if any damage to the bone is visible. MRI creates better images for soft tissue, such as the ACL. Non-surgical treatment. For lower grade or partial injuries on the ACL, or when the knee is still stable, this treatment is favorable. Especially in children, as surgery may damage their bone growth plate. 
People with previous physiological problems in their knee should also opt for non-surgical treatment because the surgery may carry more risks. The non-surgical treatments include using a brace to protect and stabilize your knee. Crutches are needed for a while to prevent your knees from bearing too much weight. Physical therapy can start as soon as the swelling of the knee goes away to promptly restore your knee's function and strengthen the leg's muscles. But the damaged ACL disables your knee from returning to its former condition and swift movements. To support an active lifestyle like football athletes, the damaged ACL needs to be reconstructed to prevent joint instability, further injury to other parts, or osteoarthritis in the future. Our next part of this video will discuss it. Anterior cruciate ligament. A piece of tough band in the knee is so crucial for jumping, running, and turning, its injury used to end an athlete's professional career. For a condition as severe as it is, torn ACL is surprisingly not uncommon. It happens around 250,000 times a year in the US alone. Most of them are due to sports injuries, but they can also be caused by accidents or falls. Fortunately, current medical advancements have given a way for people with ACL injuries to resume his or her active life or fledgling sports career by undergoing the ACL reconstruction surgery. Torn ACL will not heal, even if stitched, as it's covered in synovial fluid which prevents it from getting access to blood and oxygen to heal itself. So, a comparable living tissue is used as a graft to replace the torn ACL. The graft is generally harvested from the patient's own tissue, called an autograft, such as from the patella tendon, the hamstring tendon, and the quadriceps tendon. However, if the stability of the tissue around the knee cannot be compromised, Taking an allograft from a defrosted cadaver or using a synthetic graft may otherwise be necessary. Before the surgery, make sure the pain and swelling in the knee have lessened and the patient is able to do a normal range of motion. This is prior to the three weeks of low-intensity physical therapy required to strengthen the muscle. The doctor should ask for the patient's ongoing medications or supplements, as some medications, such as blood thinners, may increase the risk of bleeding. No food and water were allowed two hours before surgery. During the surgery, general anesthesia may be used, especially on the knee to decrease postoperative pain. The surgeon then begins to examine the knee to verify the torn ACL and check the condition of other ligaments and components as soon as the patient relaxes. After preparing the suitable graft, the surgeon starts a minimally invasive procedure called arthroscopy. Small incisions called portals, around 1 cm wide, are made in the front of the knee. One is for the arthroscope, a tube with a camera, and a light source to visually guide the surgeon. The others are for the surgical instruments to access the joint space. The torn ACL stump is removed using a shaver, which is also used to clean up the area or adjacent parts such as the meniscus. Using a special drill, bone tunnels are made to the thigh bone and shin bone in order to place and hold both ends of the graft. The sutures for the graft are tied to a long pin to be passed through the shin bone to the thigh bone tunnel. After attaching the graft, the surgeon pulls the suture and places the graft into position right where the old ACL was. Then, interference screws, spiked washers, or staples are used to secure the ends of the graft and fix it in place. The tibial end of the graft is first put under tension and secured afterwards. As the screws and sutures are biocompatible, they're handily absorbed by the bone, eliminating the need for removal surgery unless there's a problem. Finishing the surgery, the surgeon will probe the graft to make sure it has good tension and test the stability using Lachman's test. The skin is then closed and dressing can be applied. As we wait for the patient to recover after the surgery, we'll discuss the treatment and prevention in the next video. Thank you for your continuous support, especially our valued patrons and members who have been encouraging us to keep producing more quality content.